The largest school district in our state zeroing in on the type of educator they want as their next superintendent. 24 hours ago, the Mesa Public Schools Governing Board went over the application, candidate qualifications, and protocol for a nationwide search. Still, some board members said they prefer someone with district experience who can collaborate, not just innovate. I think we're all a little battle wounded here, and we're coming out just scared to delve into the unknown territory. We don't know what's out there. We don't know what kind of talent is out there until we start um, interviewing and reviewing what we have as candidates. There is a real strong... So no exact timeline just yet, but the district hopes to announce an appointment by late March. A former superintendent, Dr. Ember Conley, officially resigned last month after she was put on paid administrative leave in November. Meantime, State Superintendent Kathy Hoffman is focused on the new legislative session. It starts next week. Uh, education will be a key issue for lawmakers. So tonight, only ABC 15's Danielle Lerner goes one on one with Hoffman to discuss where we are and where we're headed. I, Katherine Hoffman, do solemnly swear. You had this vision of how this position was going to be. Did it live up to what you envisioned? Coming into this role, I, I had thought that this might be more of an administrative job, and that's what people had told me was that this position did not have much influence, but I've been really excited that I've actually been able to reimagine what the role of superintendent of public instruction means. Hoffman says her biggest accomplishments in year one include partnering with the Department of Economic Security to help support teacher recruitment and retention, allocating $20 million for SROs, social workers, and counselors, reducing the time English language learners are required to spend in English immersion, and working to streamline the ESA process by switching to a third-party vendor. Still, the fight to fill teacher vacancies and secure more funding from the legislature continues. There is a push. There are national special interest groups that are out to privatize our schools. And I think that I do believe that Arizona is ground zero for some of those pilot programs. I do think that we need to be very vigilant and monitor and really be watching to see where are these ideas coming from and how they're impacting us here at the local level. Hoffman's priorities this year include working with local high schools and colleges to strengthen what she calls the teacher pipeline, expanding the governor's 20 by 2020 proposal so that specialized positions like art, music, or special ed teachers get raises too, doubling the department's investigative unit to make sure teachers guilty of misconduct are out of the classroom quickly. She's also pushing to fully repeal our state's English-only law. The biggest challenge for me is always the politics getting in the way. I don't see myself as a politician. I see myself as an educator. Even so, politics come with the territory. Hoffman recently took some heat for proposed changes to the sex ed curriculum. Speaker Bowers called you radical, saying that you're trying to sexualize children. What's your response to those types of attacks. And the best way to get things done is to work together and so these types of baseless attacks are just a distraction from the real work that needs to get done. How tough are you prepared to get to do that? Uh, well I think this past year shows that I can be pretty tough because we got a lot done last year and that was me just getting started. In Phoenix, Danielle Lerner, ABC 15, Arizona. New at